triumphalistic to call ourselves formator because there's only one formator really, no? the Holy Spirit. So we really have to listen no? to the action of the Spirit. No? I know the church has uh, come out recently in 2023, a national ratio for the formation of seminarians. And there are elements there in different stages, like for those in philosophy, they call discipleship stage. And those in theology, they call configuration stage. In my years of working in formation, I started when I was a student brother. I was requested to be an understudy for the post novitiate. So I was assistant in formation at that time. And while I was assigned in formation, I was ordained and that was my assignment. Four years after, I was assigned at Manawag as uh, the second stage, which is the novitiate. So I was there from 2001 to 2006. Then I decided to volunteer and there was opening for the mission, so I decided to volunteer and I was sent to our mission in Sri Lanka. Then I was hoping it would be a different work, but it ended with formation also. <laughs> then when I came back, I was assigned at Manawag, but not in formation. I had a stint as prior for 11 months, and after that, the work as provincial from 2016 to 2021. I realized they're not strictly formation for the priory of Manawag, and the province, I believe the work is still formation, accompanying our brother Dominicans in their vocation, whether as uh, under formation or the permanent formation. I know this would be a different environment. I, I have to be honest, I'll be living uh, differently in terms of the Dominican life. We have a community to accompany the brother to discern, especially for those seminarians under formation. I thought all the while we have only the strong community life, but the day season, you cannot live in that life without Good morning, fathers and brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, we celebrate the Episcopal ordination of His Excellency, the Most Reverend Napoleon Balili Sipalya Jr. O.P. as Bishop of Alaminos, Pangasinan. Please all stand.
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Please be seated. We welcome to the Metropolitan Province of Lingen Dagupan, the U.S. Bishop of the Philippines, Bishop Napoleon Sipalay Jr., Bishop of Alaminos. Bishop Sipalay comes to the Metropolitan Province of Lingen Dagupan, carrying with him the gifts of being a Dominican priest, the gifts of being a missionary in Sri Lanka, the gifts of being a formator of future members of the Order of Preachers. And then the question is asked, as he himself asks, why me? Or maybe we also ask, why him? And the answer is, we don't know. We don't know why, because the call to be a bishop is a call from a merciful God. That is why Bishop Sipalay has chosen to refer to the mercy of God as his life post in being the Bishop of Alaminos. So he brings to Alaminos the eloquence of a preacher the sensitivity of a formator, the zeal of a missionary. But what is surprising even is that he goes to Alaminos not as a high priest, but as a beggar. As a beggar who says to the people of God in Alaminos, God's mercy and yours I beg for. So he's begging the people of God in Alaminos to show him mercy. And uh, he assures us that it is the mercy that he has received from God that will be his first gift to the church in Alaminos. So Bishop June, welcome to the province of Lingen Dagupan. And we welcome you to the Fraternity of Bishops of the Philippines. We are blessed that you are here. And by the mercy of God, and by the mercy of God's people, we will serve the Lord with joy. Please all stand. This is of God who calls us in Manawag. Let us also acknowledge the presence of sin that draws us away from the Lord. I confess to Almighty God and to you, to my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, in what, what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray, pray for, for me to the, the Lord, Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to life everlasting. Amen.
Francis de O. Eternal Shepherd, who governing your flock with watchful care, choose to join Napoleon, your servant and priest, to the College of Bishops this day. Grant, we pray, that by His holiness of life, we may everywhere prove to be a true witness to Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Numbers. 
From Mount Hor, the children of Israel set out on the Red Sea Road to bypass the land of Edom. But with their patience worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up to Egypt in this desert where there is no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. In punishment, the Lord sent among the people seraph serpents, which bit the people so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a seraph and mount it on a pole, and whoever looks at it will be bit, who is bitten will live. Moses accordingly made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole. And whenever anyone who had been bitten by a serpent looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. my shepherd I shall not want in verdant pastures he gives me repose beside restful waters he leads me he refreshes my soul
the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake, but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher, apostle, and teacher. On this account, I am suffering these things but I am not ashamed, for I know him in whom I have believed, and I am confident that he is able to guard what has been entrusted to me until that day. Take as your norm the sound words that you heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard this rich trust with the help of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand.
according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hard man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know mine and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. This also I must lead. And they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. The Gospel of the Lord.
Most Reverend Father, the Holy Catholic Church asks you to ordain this priest, Napoleon Balili Sipalay Jr., to the office of bishop. Have you a mandate from the Apostolic See? We have. Let it be read. Franciscus Episcopus Servus Servorum Dei, Delecto Filio Napoleoni Balili Sipalai Jr., Ordinis Fratrum Predicatorum Sodali, Actenua Vices Gerenti Rectoris, Universitatis Sancti Tome Seminari Centralis, in Archidiocesi Manilensi, Episcopo Aluminensi Constituto, Salutem et Benedictionem. Ex monibus assumptus et impermate circumdatus, misus es episcopus a patre familias ad gobernandam familiam suam, boni pastoris exemplum ante oculus deu noctuque tenens, qui ad miniserandram venit, co pastoralis nevitatis cardine permoti, paterna delectione, ad spiritualis mentem, flectimus necessitates, ecclesiales communitates aluminensis, quia vacans in presens, post translationem venerabilis fratris, Ricardi el Bacai, ad metropolitanam sedem togigeraunam, suum expectat pastorem ac vite diocesane met moderatorem, Dete ergo delecte file cogitamus, qui missionale pastorilique actuisitate somme pere deditus, multas humanas christianasque dotes ostendesti, ob quasi donius nobis veneris hoc ad officium apte exercendum. Provinde de consiglio de castiri pro episcopis, Apostolice nostre autoritatis plenitudine te episcopum aluminensis lepenter constituimus debitis concisis ioribus congruisque impositis obligationibus iuvic ad nexis officio. Ordinationem episcopalem extra orbem romam servatis liturgicie normis a catholico episcopo, quem eligis suscipere poteris, tuum autem antea erit fidei, professionem dare et iosurandum fidelitatis erga nos succes roesque nostros, ot ecclesiastice legis regulas prestere. Oc de nostro decreto edocias volumus clerum et populum tuve dioceses, quos toto corde ad ortamur, ot di abeian costudem ac magestrum colentum. Tibi, delecta fili, preset dominus, ot biate Maria Virgine, justemque sponso, patriarca Iosef, intercentibus populus sanctu dei, Iugiter servias in fide et spe, iundumque ardenti nutrias caritate. Datum Rome Laterani, de do de trecissimo mensis januarii, in memoria Thomas de Aquino, presbitere et ecclesiae doctoris, anno domini 1539. 
Besmelissimo, Dicissimo Quarto, Fontificatus Nostri, Ondicimo, Franciscus. Please be seated. Francis, Bishop, Servant of the Servants of God, to our beloved son, Napoleon B. Sipale Jr., member of the Order of Preachers, currently Vice Rector of the University of Santo Tomas Central Seminary in the Archdiocese of Manila, appointed Bishop of Alaminos. Greetings and blessings. Being taken from among men and himself beset with weakness, a bishop is sent by the Father to govern his family, keeping before his eyes the example of the Good Shepherd who comes to minister. Moved by the hinge of pastoral diligence with paternal love, we turn our thoughts to the spiritual needs of the ecclesial community of Alaminos, which is currently vacant after the transfer of our venerable brother, Ricardo L. Bacay, to the Metropolitan See of Togigarao, waiting for her shepherd and moderator of the diocesan life. We consider you, beloved son, as one who is greatly devoted to missionary and pastoral activity, as you have shown numerous human and Christian gifts. Thus, we see you as suitable for the proper exercise of this office. Therefore, upon consultation with the dicastery for bishops, by the fullness of our apostolic authority, we gladly appoint you Bishop of Alaminos, conceding to you the duty and rights and imposing upon you the relatives, relative obligations attached to this office. You may receive the Episcopal ordination from any Catholic bishop anywhere outside the city of Rome, with the liturgical norms being observed. However, beforehand, you must make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity towards us and our successors in accordance with the norms of ecclesiastical law. With this decree of ours, we wish to inform the clergy and the people of your diocese, whom we exhort with all our hearts to have you as their guardian and teacher to respect. With the Blessed Virgin Mary and her spouse, Saint Joseph, interceding, may the Lord grant to you, our beloved Son, that you may always serve the holy people of God in faith and hope, and proceeding ardently, may you nurture them with love. Given in Rome at the Lateran on the 20th day of the month of January, the memorial of St. Thomas Aquinas, priest and doctor of the church, in the year of our Lord, 2024, the 11th year of our pontificate. Signed by the Holy Father, Francis. Your Excellency, the Most Reverend Charles John Brown, 
Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines, Your Excellency, the Most Reverend Socrates Villegas, Archbishop of Lingayen, Dagupan, Venerable Brothers in the Episcopate, Your Excellency, the Most Reverend Napoleon Sipalay, Jr., O.P., our beloved Ordinandus today, and Bishop-elect of Alaminos, Very Reverend Father, Filimon de la Cruz, O.P., Prior of the Philippine Province of the Order of Preachers, my dear brother priests, my esteemed brothers in the Dominican family, deacons, persons in consecrated life, beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. With joy and enthusiasm, we thank the Lord who gathered us today to celebrate the gift of faith and ministry in the Church. We particularly thank the Lord for the gift of a new bishop to minister to his people. Bishop Jun, maraming salamat na nandito ka ngayon para maging obispo. Salamat sa pagtanggap mo ng biyaya at misyon ng paglilingkod bilang obispo. The original Greek word for bishop is episkopos. It comes from two Greek words, epi and skopos. From this etymology, we can derive two spiritual virtues of a bishop, seeking with love and looking above. The first is seeking with love. The Greek word skopos is sometimes translated as onlooker or the one who sees or looks. However, it means much more than this. It is a form of the Greek verb skeptomai which does not only mean to look or to see, but to look carefully and to see intently. Ang isang skopos ay hindi lang tumitingin, hindi lang nagmamasid. He is not contented with mere glances or quick peeks but desires to look more clearly and see more closely. Tumitingin ng maigi, maingat, at mainam. He does not jump to hasty conclusions or make rash decisions based on shallow data, petty knowledge, or selfish biases. Rather, he exerts effort and spends time and resources to search more, find more, learn more, reveal more, and love more. The bishop, therefore, is one who seeks with love. Bishop Jun chose the Episcopal motto Misericordiam Dei et Vestram, which means God's mercy and yours. This line was actually Bishop Jun's response on the day that he professed his religious vows as a Dominican. It was his response to the question, Quid? Queritis, what do you seek? By choosing this motto, Bishop Jun is telling us that as a bishop, 
He will be a seeker. He will be a scopus. He will intently and eagerly seek God's mercy for him and for his people. He will contemplate the merciful face of God in his own heart. He will seek and gaze at God's presence within him, firmly guiding him and gently encouraging him. He will constantly seek people to come to God's mercy. Like the Good Shepherd in the Gospel today, he will use his voice and offer his life in order to watch vigilantly over the flock, seek those who lost their way, look out for those who got left behind, and find those who left out of frustration and despair. Like the Anointed One in today's first reading, He will seek out the poor, the captive, and those who mourn in order to bring them glad tidings of hope, freedom, and consolation. Bishop June will be a bishop who seeks with love. The second is looking above. The Greek word epi means upon or above. Combined with scopus, it is often translated as overseer or supervisor, giving the impression that the bishop is a disengaged boss or bad cop who frantically look out for people's mistakes and sins and threatens them with penalties and controls their behavior. However, episcopos may also mean the one looking above or the one with a lofty vision. Ang isang episkopos ay hindi lamang tumitingin, kundi tumitingala. He looks above. The second reading we heard today, the Apostle Paul reminds the Bishop Timothy not to look down, but to look up, not to cower in fear or hide in shame because the gospel he bears is not something to be ashamed of or something to make us afraid. Rather, a bishop must always look up and above because he is witnessing to the gospel which gives confidence and courage. By constantly contemplating and seeking God's mercy, Bishop June will always look up to God, whose fidelity and compassion never fails. That way, he can see above the ever-fleeting matters of this world, because he looks through the great mysteries of God's eternal vision of love. He can see God's love, which is always greater than sin, failure, or hardship. And looking up to God, he will also see God looking up to him. Ang Diyos ay parang butiki kung tumingin sa atin. Ang butiki sa kiseme, habang tumitingin sa lupa, ay nakatingala. Mula sa ibabaw, mula sa langit, 
nakatingala ang Diyos sa atin. Bishop June, tinat, tinat, tinitingala ka ng Diyos. Bilib siya sa iyo. Mabuti ang pagtingin niya sa iyo. Hindi dahil magaling ka, kundi dahil mahal ka ng Diyos. Kaya tumingala ka lang lagi sa Diyos at tingalain mo ang bayan ng Diyos na ipinagkatiwala niya sa iyo. As an episkopos, as the one who looks above, Bishop June will look up to his clergy and to his whole flock with a lofty vision of them, seeing and appreciating the greatness of their faith, valuing their gifts, and cherishing their unique stories. Bishop June will journey with his people with high esteem for the presence of God in them. Bishop June will be a bishop who looks above. My dear Bishop June, seeking with love and seeing above, these are two virtues that God's beloved people ask of their bishops today. Amid the weight, multitude, and complexity of the various responsibilities of a bishop, we pray that you may always be episcopos, that you will always seek with love and look above. Adieu, dear brothers and sisters. Please pray for Bishop June and for all of us, your pastors, that we may truly be episcopoi, servants of God, who seek with love and look above. May the lovely Virgin of Manawag, who calls us to draw near His Son, Guide us and pray for us. Amen. The ancient rule of the Holy Fathers ordains that a bishop elect is to be questioned in the presence of the people on his resolve to uphold the faith and to discharge his duty. And so, dear brother Napoleon, do you resolve by the grace of the Holy Spirit to discharge until death the office entrusted to us by the apostles, which we are about to pass on to you by the laying on of our hands. I do. Do you resolve to preach the gospel of Christ with constancy and fidelity? I do. Do you resolve to guard the deposit of faith, entire and incorrupt, as handed down by the apostles and preserved in the church everywhere and at all times? I do. Do you resolve to build up the body of Christ, His Church, and to remain in the unity of that body, together with the order of bishops, under the authority of the successor of St. Peter the Apostle? I do. Do you resolve to render obedience faithfully to the successor of the blessed Apostle Peter? I do. Do you resolve to guide the holy people of God in the way of salvation as a devoted father and sustain them with the help of your fellow ministers, the priests and deacons. I do. Do you resolve for the sake of the Lord's name 
to be welcoming and merciful to the poor, to strangers, and to all who are in need. I do. Do you resolve as a good shepherd to seek out the sheep who stray and gather them into the Lord's fold? I do. Do you resolve to pray without ceasing to Almighty God for the holy people and to carry out the office of high priest without reproach? I do with the help of God. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Please all stand. Dearly beloved, let us pray that the kindness of Almighty God in providing for the welfare of the Church will grant an abundance of His grace for this chosen one, Napoleon. Let us kneel.
graciously hear our petitions, O Lord, and pour out upon this your servant Napoleon the power of your blessing flowing from the horn of priestly grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand.
Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, who dwell on high and look upon the lowly, who know all things before they come to be, and who lay down observances in your church, through the word of your grace, who from the beginning for ordained the nation of the just, born of Abraham, established rulers and priests, and did not leave your sanctuary without ministers, and who from the foundation of the world were pleased to be glorified in those you have chosen, the bishops together. Pour out now upon this chosen one, that power which is from you, the governing spirit whom you gave to your beloved son, Jesus Christ, the spirit whom he bestowed upon the holy apostles, who established the church in his place as your sanctuary for the glory and unceasing praise of your name. Grant, O Father, knower of all hearts, that this your servant whom you have chosen for the office of bishop may shepherd your holy flock, serving you night and day. May he fulfill before you without reproach the ministry of the high priesthood, so that always gaining your favor, he may offer up the gifts of your holy church. Grant that by the power of the spirit of the high priesthood, he may have the power to forgive sins according to your command, assign offices according to your decree, and lose every bond according to the power given by, the, by you to the apostles. May he please you by his meekness and purity of heart, presenting a fragrant offering to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom glory and power and honor are yours with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now, forever and ever. May God, who has made you a sharer of the high priesthood of Christ, himself pour out upon you the oil of mystical anointing and make you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessings.
receive the gospel and preach the word of God with all patience and sound teaching. Receive this ring, the seal of fidelity, adorned with undefiled faith, preserved and blemished, the bride of God, the Holy Church. Receive the mitre, and may the splendor of holiness shine forth in you, so that when the chief shepherd appears, you may deserve to receive from him an unfading crown of glory. Receive the crozier, the sign of your pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the Church of God.
earth and that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, which we have presented for your church and for Napoleon, your servant and bishop, become an offering acceptable to you for the good of the flock. May he whom you have raised up among your people to be high priest be endowed by your gift with apostolic virtues through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them in the word, and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and it never cease to gather the people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you may the same spirit graciously make holy this gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, 
our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving it thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving it thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, His wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to His second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Socrates, our Bishop, Fidelis, his assistant bishop, Napoleon, Jr., who has been ordained today as shepherd for the Church of Alaminos, with the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children is scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say. from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Shepherd, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Feast of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please all stand. Let us pray. May the power of this sacrament, O Lord, increase the gifts of your grace in upon you on your servant and bishop, that he may serve you worthily in the pastoral ministry and receive the eternal rewards of a faithful steward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing. Good noon to everyone. Today we gather not just to celebrate this Episcopal consecration, but also to reflect on the ever-present grace of God. My journey, like all our journeys, is a testament to this grace. A Dominican priest reminded me before going to our overseas mission in Sri Lanka to continue naming God's grace. Little did I know 
when I received the appointment as Bishop of Alaminos, that grace would echo yet again. Our brothers in the province saw it too, reminding me that this is the path, a gift, a grace. And so it has been revealed time and again, even a moment of self-reflection, a selfie, sometimes doubt about my capacity, but I understand that this is not for me, but for service. This grace is not a solitary act, but a call to build. With this consecration, the call is sealed. The selfies end, and we turn our gaze outward to the work that lies ahead. Building the church in Alaminas is a task for all of us, a shared responsibility. I stand before you not only as a bishop, but also as a recipient of God's boundless love. This love, this love in action, which is mercy, found me when I joined the order of preachers. It has shaped me. It will continue to guide me, especially in this new mission. The Dominican life, which, with its rich experience, will be forever a part of who I am, whom I serve as. I will continue to name God's grace. I will strive to embody the love and mercy I have received. I will cooperate with His grace, allowing it to strengthen not just myself, but all within the diocese, especially those most in need. May this Thanksgiving be a true reflection of gratitude, not just for this day, but for the boundless grace that surrounds us all. Actually, marami pong gusto sanang i-mention personally. There's so many of them who helped me to where I am today. Please allow me to mention some of them, but I remember all of you in my heart. I'd like to thank His Holiness, Pope Francis. Thank you for the trust for me to serve in the wider mission of the Church. To His Eminence, Jose Cardinal Advincula, inspiring me for this homily that I have to always to be a seeker of love and to look up. You readily accepted my request when I requested you to give this homily. Maraming salamat po. To His Excellency Archbishop Charles Brown, Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines, who guided me as I began to accept this appointment as Bishop of Alaminos, Thank you very much for reminding me this is a grace, and I will cooperate with the grace. Bishop Socrates Villegas, the main consecrator for this Episcopal ordination, I learned from you that a bishop is a priest who extends his hands in service to the wider church in the diocese until he extends his hands to embrace the cross of Christ. Thank you for all the assistance in preparing and guiding us in the celebration of this Episcopal ordination. To the co-consecrators, Bishop Jacinto Se and Bishop Videlis Layog, especially for Bishop Videlis, thank you for attending to the needs of the Diocese of Aleminos for the last four years in the Diocese and for preparing with our clergy in the Diocese of Aleminos for the incoming installation tomorrow, March 19, 2024. Our bishops and bishops here present, especially to Bishop Teodoro Buhain, who ordained us our batch in 1997. Maraming salamat po. I'd like to mention uh, His Eminence Archbishop Romulo Valles, whose archdiocese where I grew up and discerned my vocation to serve the Lord. Nagkang salamat, Bishop. Ang uh, tinuod, Bishop, nagampo ko sa atong cathedral sa San Pedro. I prayed at our cathedral at San Pedro. It was there that I experienced God. It was very clear that God has called me for this way of life. Please allow me to mention persons who in many ways helped me to where I am now. I'd like to thank Father Palomon de la Cruz, OP, our Prime Provincial, for his zealous leadership in the province and helping me with the preparation for this Episcopal ordination. Father Richard Ang, OP, Director of UST, Father Jesus Miranda, and the Prior of St. Thomas Aquinas in Manila, where I was last assigned. Father Kiriko Pedregosa, OP, Rector of UST Central Seminary. I'd like to thank Father Louis Coronel, OP, and USC Secretary General Office, 
Father George Pemang and USC Purchasing Office, Philip Jose Hernandez and the USC Communications Bureau and DMD. Father Felix Igaswi III and the Dominican community here at Manawag, the Colegio de San Juan de Latran, the Minor Basilica staff for the preparation of this beautiful Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, from those who prepared the place, ushers us and everyone who prepared for this celebration. Especially I'd like to thank Father Jofer Fernandez, Father Solomon Gislani, Father Fernand Strada, Father Aaron Romero, Father Chad, our two deacons, Deacons Gloria and Lavarias. I'd like to mention our brother Monsignor Bernardo Pantin for preparing us the invitations for our bishops. Thank you very much, Po. I'd like to thank my four mentors, Father Eugene Cabillion OP, Father Edmond Nantes, who is still in Indonesia, Father Kiriko Pedregosa, Father Pelimon de la Cruz OP, and Father Enrico Gonzalez. I'd like to thank our Dominican priors from the Dominican province of the Philippines and the Holy Rosary province with our student brothers, novices and under formation, active and contemplative sisters, lay Dominicans, and the whole Dominican family. All the and priests from the Archdiocese of Lingay and Dagupan, Diocese of Alaminos and other dioceses, especially those coming from Mindanao. I'd like to make mention Sister Dina Esteliore, OP. She was my teacher in theology, and she was the one who introduced me to the Dominican life, the Hang Salamat sister. And I believe uh, in these uh, last years, that uh, especially as growing old, I always look up to the Dominicans, especially the Dominican Sisters of Trinity for leading me to the Dominican life. To the various religious congregations of brothers and sisters who are here, I'd like to thank uh, the LGU of Manawag, especially their mayor, Mayor Ming, Rosario, and those who are here from City of Alaminos. I'd like to thank when I had my retreat at the Abbey of Our Lady of Montserrat, uh, Abbot Father Austin Cadiz, OSB, and the Benedictines. Maraming salamat po with Mom Sinchbaga. I'd like to thank our batch at USD SDB 1996, headed by our president, Rino Guarin. Maraming salamat, Father, and our batch. In the province, we're so big, I have really felt I belong to the province because I have a batch from the novitiate. By the way, we were the first novices here at Manawag when the novitiate at the back was built in 1990. So we were reminded that we were in the womb of our Blessed Mother, Our Lady of Manawag. Now, I, as I am entering this new mission, I believe uh, Our Lady will always accompany me. She promised that from this place, she will pray that the blessings of God will flow to her prayers. We'd like to thank our deceased religious priests of Alaminos and Danging Dagupan, especially of the Tridum and the catechetical preparation to prepare us for this episcopal ordination. I'd like also to thank Father Carmelo Jack Arada, Father Ardin Dacuma, Father Boyd Sulpico, Father Gaspar Sigaya, John Michael Balance, Father Rilquilito Arate, Father Jeron Hieronimo, Brother Melencio Garcia, Father Carlo Canto, Mr. Ivan Panganiban, Mr. Nathaniel Gonzalez, Tonton and Junjun Santos, Dr. Belen Tanko OP, Marita Santos OP, Mary Ann Kong, Brother Kevin Makandili. I would like to mention the last community I am assigned, especially at UST, our centralites from the UST Central Seminary who act as servers and lectors in this Mass, and also our Central Seminary student priests. I never thought All my life, I'm a religious. When I was assigned at the interdiocesan seminary, I would end up as a diocesan bishop. And I believe uh, I have learned a lot from you, my dear centralites, and my companions in the seminary. I'd like to thank also Father Dodoy, who, who was our shepherd, and he has really taught me how to follow Christ, patterning our heart after the Good Shepherd. I'd like to thank the choirs, Father Fernand. Uh, Kasama ko po yung mga choir members when I traveled one time to Masbate. I, we have traveled very long. I never knew that you're joining us here. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. I'd like to thank also our, uh, those who work in our media, Sabin Studio, Juni, and Ms. Evelyn Cruz. And those who host our guests here at Manawag, the Manawag Hotel, and Dr. Mirna Mendoza and family. 
at Holy Family Pilgrimage Hotel and for the generous persons who house many of our guests at Manawag, especially here at the convent. I would like to thank our relatives from Sipalay side, Monteroyo side. They traveled all the way from Visayas and Mindanao and many parts of Luzon. I really thank the Lord because we're a very small family in Davao. If you see Sipalay in Davao, we are all related. But most of us we came from Cebu. Tinuod yun kapag nahimu kang pari, it is a relative issue. No? Mindi say dumadami relatives. And thank our relatives who joined uh, in this celebration. It really shows to us that uh, yeah, it has been the prayer of the family. I just realized when I met them in Cebu that they have been praying for a priest. And not only a priest now, sumobrat ang prayers ninyo, ano? Naging bishop ang pinagdasal ninyo. I'd like to thank also our um, friends who are here. So there's so many of you. I Please be assured I write your names in my heart. I have, I'm touched by my teachers who came all the way from Davao just to be here. My English teacher, mom, I'm very sorry kung naging ganito English ko dahil po yan sa inyo. <laughs> thank you very much. I'd like to thank my family. My mother, uh, my father passed away in 2005, and she's here with us. My mother, Ophelia, uh, who never ceases to accompany me in her prayers in my vocation. And all my other siblings, Wilhelmina, who cannot come here, she's not in the U.S., and Nancy, who's in Canada, and my brother is here, Neftali. I may have forgotten many to mention here, but you have influenced my life and helped me to be what I am today. Please accompany me with your prayers. To the Triune God who graced me with this vocation to serve in a wider scope, the church, I'd like to thank the Lord that will forever be indebted. To Our Lady of the Holy Rosary, to whom I'm always inspired to follow God faithfully, to St. Dominic and all our Dominican saints. We continue each other to continue to name the grace of God. Maraming salamat, takang salamat sa tanat. For me, as the Apostolic Nuncio here in the Philippines, it is a source of great joy, great appreciation to be with all of you here this morning at the feet of Our Lady in this renowned minor basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary in Manawag for the Episcopal ordination of His Excellency, the Most Reverend Napoleon B. Sipalai, Jr. O.P., Bishop-elect until tomorrow of Alaminos. It's wonderful to be here with Jose Cardinal Advincula, Archbishop of Manila, who gave a beautiful homily, and of course, your own dear Archbishop, Socrates B. Villegas, as the principal consecrator and our host here in this beautiful minor basilica this morning. Bishop June, Bishop Sipalai, is a Dominican. And we see that reflected very much in this church, this basilica, which has been administered by the Dominican Fathers from time immemorial. We see the Dominican formation in his wonderful preaching, his eloquence as a man of the word, as an order of preachers. The Dominicans began to produce bishops for the church not long after the death of the founder, St. Dominic, who died in 1221. Within a little more than 10 years, the sons of Dominic were becoming bishops in the church, serving the church by being preachers, preachers of the faith as bishops. Here in the Philippines, the first Dominican bishop was the first bishop of Manila, Domingo Salazar, who came to Manila and was bishop from 1579. After him, there's been a series of Dominican bishops here in the Philippines, and in recent years, among Filipinos, because many of the, Filipi many of the, the bishops 
who were Dominicans in the Philippines were of Spanish origin. We've had now at least two Filipino Dominican bishops, the late Archbishop Emeritus Leonardo Legaspi of Caceres and the late Auxiliary Bishop Jose Salazar of Lipa. And now we have your beloved, most reverend Napoleon Sipalai as the bishop-elect of Alaminos. What a joy, what a tradition. I don't want to let this moment pass without, in the name of Pope Francis and the dicastery of bishops, saying a word of thanks and appreciation and recognition to His Excellency, the Most Reverend Fidelis Lyog, who has administered the Diocese of Alaminos in this period of sede vacante. Thank you, dear Bishop Lyog, for everything that you've done during these years. It's most appreciated by all of us. As the Cardinal and also as Archbishop Villegas mentioned, the motto chosen by Bishop Sipalai is very beautiful. Misdicordium Dei et Vestram. God's mercy and yours. God's mercy and yours. And as you heard, those words are the response of a young Dominican when he's making his vows his profession as a Dominican. God's mercy and yours. We see two elements there which have been reflected upon this morning. God's mercy, the vertical dimension, God, our Almighty Father, and your mercy, the horizontal dimension, you, the baptized people of God. So the vertical and the horizontal dimension which are so beautifully expressed in that phrase, misericordium dei et vestram. And then when we think about the responses, think for a moment, and you've got these beautifully printed programs, the final response of then Father Sipalai before he was ordained to be a bishop this morning. He was asked, these words, these were the last things he heard before he gave his final response. Do you resolve to pray without ceasing to Almighty God for his holy people to carry out the office of the high priest without reproach? It's the last question, the last question that a priest hears before he is elevated to the episcopate. And how did Father Sipalai responded, I do with the help of God. His final words as a presbyter before becoming an, Episcop an episcopus, as we heard. This idea of prayer without ceasing has to be fundamental for a bishop. It's what he promised as a condition of his ordination. He promises to pray pray to God for the people. And we see that beautiful double dimension in that final question, that qu final inquiry, God and people, as we see in his Episcopal motto, the vertical and the horizontal. And those vertical and horizontal dimensions are not disassociated one from the other. They come together, don't they, brothers and sisters? the vertical and the horizontal in the cross of Jesus Christ. The horizontal beam, the vertical beam, coming together in the sacrifice of Christ, the man of prayer, the man who offers himself to the Father. So all of these themes of God and people, of verticality and horizontality come together this morning on these days in which we prepare to celebrate the most holy moment of the church's liturgical year, Settimana Santa, Holy Week, next week, which will culminate in the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All of these things come together today and fill our hearts with great joy. And we do all of these things under the watchful eyes of Our Lady, Our Lady of the Rosary, Mary, the one by whose yes 
the world, indeed the cosmos, was changed. And it leads me to say once again to now Bishop Sipalai, thank you for your yes to the Holy Father, Pope Francis, when he asked you to take on this new pastoral work, to be an episcopus, to pray unceasingly, without ceasing, to God, for the people of God. So dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I thank you for this wonderful and beautifully prepared liturgy this morning. I greet, of course, all my brother bishops, many concelebrating priests, especially those who are Dominicans and those from Alaminos. You've been waiting a long time. That moment has almost arrived. It will arrive in some 24 hours when your new bishop is installed. Thank you to the religious women, especially the wonderful Dominican sisters mentioned by Bishop Sipalai. Thank you the other sisters, religious brothers, and most of all, thank you to the people, the people of Pangasinan who have come here in such great numbers to celebrate, to rejoice, to thank God for the gift of a new bishop. In the name of Pope Francis, God bless you. Announcement. There will be a picture taking after the Mass. Please take note of the order of picture taking, which will be as follows. First, Bishop June with the Papal Nuncio and the Cardinal. Next will be Bishop June with the Principal Consecrator and Co-Consecrators. Next will be Bishop June with all the bishops. It will be followed by Bishop June with the Dominican Fathers and Brothers, including student brothers and novices. Next will be Bishop June with the clergy of the Diocese of Alaminos. Next will be the other diocesan priests and religious priests, including the seminarians. Next will be Bishop June with his immediate family. Next will be Bishop June and his relatives. It will be followed by the religious sisters. Next will be the lay Dominicans and other Dominican family. Lastly, Bishop June with his friends. Please all stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Napoleon, my brother, Bishop, may the Lord bless you and keep you as he has willed to set you as high priest over his people. So may he make you happy in this present life and grant you a share in the happiness that is life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Napoleon, my brother, Bishop, May he grant that the clergy and people he has chosen to unite by his gracious help be happily governed by his providence and your stewardship for many years to come unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Napoleon, my brother bishop, may they obey God's commandments, freed from adversity, and may they abound in all that is good, submitting in faith to your ministry so that they may enjoy peace and tranquility in the present age and with you be found worthy to share the company of the citizens of eternity forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I request the Apostolic Nuncio, the Cardinal, and the Archbishops and Bishops to bless the people together. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>